Okay, here I'm going to go over an overview of Treasury stock and how it affects their stockholders' equity. But before I do that, let's look and see where it's included here between the authorized stock, the issued stock, and the outstanding stock. Now, our authorized stock, that's the total number of shares that the company can sell. That includes any retired stock. And this retired stock, that may be issued again at a later date after it's retired. Now the issued stock, that's where the company can issue or sell any portion of this authorized stock up here. That includes the stock that has been repurchased by the company. That would be include our treasury stock. So our issued stock includes our treasury stock. And then when the company issues the stock, it remains issued until it's retired. Now our outstanding stock, that's the stock that's currently held by the investors that does not include the stock that has been repurchased by the company. That would be our treasury stock. So our outstanding stock does not include our treasury stock. This treasury stock is the stock that's been bought back by the company and it's held here in this treasury stock account. Now the difference between our issued stock and our outstanding stock is the number of shares, shares of treasury stock. So let's go and look at a brief overview of Treasury stock and how it does affect our stockholders' equity. Okay, let's define what Treasury stock is. Now, Treasury stock and the additional paid in capital to Treasury stock are part of stockholders' equity on the balance sheet. And Treasury stock are those shares of common stock that have been in circulation, but they've been repurchased and they're stored here in this Treasury stock account until they're either reissued as common stock or they're retired. Now this con treasury stock is also a contra equity account. So we can look at it in terms of a change in cash versus a change in equity. So let's look at where we would have a stock buyback. This is where we'd be moving our common stock into our treasury stock account. And at the same time, we'd be reducing our cash account for the uh, price that we had to pay for that stock. And this reduction in here in our cash account would be reducing our stockholders equity. Now let's look at where we would reissue this stock. So we'd be moving our reducing our treasury stock by moving it into our common stock account. Now at the same time, we'd be increasing our cash account here for the amount of uh, cash we received for when we issued that stock here. So we would be increasing our cash while we'd also be increasing our stockholders' equity. So you can see where this treasury stock here is a contra equity account. All right, to summarize, our treasury stock are shares of common stock that have been repurchased here and they're stored in this treasury stock account. Now the treasury stock account is a contra account to our stockholders equity, where our normal stockholders equity accounts here would be have a credit balance for an increase, where our treasury uh, stock account here has a debit balance for an increase. And when we look at it in terms of cash versus equity, where we go out and we buy back some outstanding common stock, we would increase our treasury account for that amount, and then we would uh, decrease our cash for the purchase price of that uh, common stock. So our reduction here in cash would reduce our stockholders' equity. And then when we reissue the, the uh, treasury stock, we would reduce our treasury stock account here, and then we'd be increasing our cash account for the amount that we received for the sale of that stock. And the increase here in our cash would increase our stockholders' equity. So in terms of a cash versus equity, the treasury stock here is a contra count as well. So that's just a summary here of treasury stock and how it can be interchanged here with our common stock and how we would buy and sell this treasury stock and how it would affect both the cash and any stockholders equity.